How to cruise around the world. You have heard of it. Maybe you have done it, or maybe this is the ultimate bucket list experience that you are dreaming of. Either way, this is a video series that will take you on a cruise around the world. From getting money, spending money, packing, medical, house, and pet care, booking excursions, will it all be worth it? These questions and more will be answered in our How to Cruise Around the World video series. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss a great episode. Hi, this is Bob from Bucket List Cruise and Travel. I am a travel agent who took a world cruise in 2019. In this series, we will discuss what we learned on our 2019 Princess World Cruise. And if you can believe that was the last fully completed world cruise since cruising was shut down and what we have in store for the 2023 world cruise which is coming up. Fingers crossed that that one will sail. Let's start in order. First, how do you get money? Well, the easiest thing that most people and the one thing that they already do is to get your income coming into your bank account automatically. If you have an income that enters via pension, paycheck, etc., set up your banking on direct deposit. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Next, set up your regular bills to be paid automatically with your bank's bill pay feature. But there are some bills here that uh, you have not thought about, so stay tuned. Now, go to your bank account and link all your monthly bills to auto pay. We don't want to worry about missing a payment, worse, being late, or the most feared, just plain not having a bill paid at all. So we set up all of our accounts to pay all credit cards in full every month. We set up our mortgage, utilities, and phone all to be paid automatically as well. Since some of these bills fluctuate in terms of how much you owe each month, we advance paid on those accounts and then also paid every month on top of that just to ensure that we had more than enough money coming out to cover those expenses. You will receive a credit if you overpaid and it'll all work out by the time you're back home. Insurance. You know that those uh, once every six month bills, don't forget about those. Make sure that you check your due dates on your life insurance, your auto insurance, and your property insurance, as well as your tax bills, if they are not coming out of the monthly mortgage payment. How about car registrations? Those can be a big penalty if you pay late. So, if you are uh, wanting to look at those and see when those are due, that's a good idea too. Just look at the sticker or the registration in your car and note the month of its renewal. If they are due while you're gone, get them paid before you leave. Income taxes. Most world cruises depart in January and are gone through the entire tax season. Check with your tax advisor. But what we did was to file for an extension and we paid any amounts due that we thought were going to be due because the IRS is fine if you have a file an extension, but you have to pay what taxes are due prior to the filing deadline. This uh, ties into your decision about mail services, which is coming up soon, so stay tuned. Because more than likely, all of your tax documents that you will need to file your taxes will be there when you get home, and they'll be in your mailbox while you are gone. Have more than one way to access your money while you are away. First, alert your credit card companies of all your travel plans. Banks really aren't that well set up for world cruises. Often, you can only put in one destination or region of travel when prompted, and some banks don't require you to notify them at all. We did as much as we could in advance to notify all of our banks. Now, keep in mind, you'll be traveling to some very out-of-the-way places, so make sure you have redundancy on your ATM options while you're abroad. For instance, if the American Express card you carry gets a fraud alert and closes for your protection, I keep being reminded, you will still want to have a Visa card and an ATM card minimum as a backup as these things happen when you're traveling, especially when you least expect it. This did happen to us during our trip and we were glad that we could just switch to another card and keep traveling. Look for an ATM cash advance card that does not charge a fee for its use. We used a debit card linked to a Charles Schwab account that reimbursed all of our ATM fees, and we had zero issue getting local currency with that card 
until I made the mistake of trying to get additional cash in Brazil immediately after I had already done so. Looking back, I knew that this would trigger a fraud alert, and it did. A quick phone call did take care of our issue, but lesson learned. In some places, you will need local money, as that is all that is accepted. But for the most part, we were able to use U.S. dollars to pay for all of our trips, our tours, dining, etc. But there were some places that only took local currency, so be prepared with multiple ways to pay on shore. Carry cash and take small bills with you before you leave home. You will want some small bills for tipping and for some minor shopping trips. Interesting enough, some countries are very particular about the crispness of the U.S. bills. They do not want damaged bills, so go to the bank and get some small bills in advance and keep those in the safe in your stateroom. Another great resource is the cruise line itself. The ship often has local currency on board and allowed customers to exchange U.S. money on board prior to arrival in port. We used that service sometimes and we also went to the local ATM machines and got local currency because it allowed you to get smaller bills and or to get change back. You will also need to make a list of all your medications that you will be needing. Make a photocopy and email it to yourself and take a photo of all your prescriptions with your phone. Before you leave, talk with your doctor and order enough medications for your entire trip. And take the prescriptions with you just in case you have any problems while you are gone. Medical care was widely available throughout the world. Our ship and the ship's doctor assisted some passengers that we know with a doctor visit ashore in South Africa of all places to get some care that was not available on the ship. So know that there is medical care all over the world and that the ship will help you. But the more prepared you are, the better off you will be. Next are some things to do at the house before you leave home. Don't assume that you'll be covered by your homeowner's insurance if you are planning to leave your home vacant. Some policies will not cover you if your house is vacant for, say, more than 30, 90 days, and so on. You will need to know your policy and then determine if you will leave your home vacant, hire a house sitter, or make other arrangements before you leave. If you do leave your home vacant, make sure that you do think about some things like uh, water that might be leaking and make a plan for that. For instance, turn off the hot water heater, unplug the refrigerator, oh, and if you do, leave the door open in the refrigerator for the air to circulate. In some climates, you might want to just shut off the heat and shut off the water at the main. Some climates, that may cause the pipes to freeze. So, like I said, you will need to make your own decisions about how to prepare your house for while you're gone. But you will need to prepare your house for a long departure or for someone else to periodically check on the condition of things. Think about the contents of your refrigerator and your other storage places. You will need to throw out most of your foods just before you depart. There could be some very nasty surprises awaiting you if perishable food is left in a running refrigerator while you are away for four months. Also, make sure that you empty all the trash and have someone take your trash to the curb while you are away for the same reason. Could you imagine how bad it would be to come home and your uh, trash is still in the can? Mail service. The U.S. Postal Service will only hold your mail, such as vacation hold, for 30 days. Even if you have most of your bills delivered to you online, you will still need to figure out how to deal with all your junk mail that will come. You will have a few options depending on if someone is staying at your home or not. There are services that will hold your mail, scan your mail, and send you an email of the mail contents right to you on board the ship and mail forwarding services that you can turn on and turn off when you return home. One example is TravelingMailbox.com. For phone services, you will want to check with your cellular phone company to see what sort of services you will have or not have, depending on the carrier and of the cost. Most cellular companies allow you to purchase a package for overseas travel, but do double check that the countries you'll be visiting are included with that plan. More than likely, you'll end up going to some countries that will not be included, so know what's included in the plan you're buying. We are, and we're with, T-Mobile when we traveled, and we can say that we went all the way around the world with no added fees. 
How did we do this? Well, they have a pretty remarkable plan, one that does not require an annual commitment, but we had cell and text coverage and limited data. But we did have call and text coverage in nearly all ports of call. When we were on the ship, we had an unlimited Wi-Fi package that came with the ship's internet package that we purchased. Sometimes this is a benefit, uh, which is included now. And with the Wi-Fi, we turned our phones to Wi-Fi calling while on the ship. We turned our phones to cellular while in port, and we were connected virtually everywhere in the world and at all times. We even took our travel business with us on the world cruise. We used Wi-Fi calling to talk to customers at sea and providers, and we used local phone and text while we were in port. It worked seamlessly, far better even than we imagined. We advise that you make all these changes while you're still at home. Start things a month or two before your long trip so that you can work out any kinks and issues before you go. It's really simple not to be home. Pets. Okay, this is the hardest part of leaving, we think. We love them, but we love to travel, too. Every now and then, we must leave our pets with someone we trust to fulfill something on our bucket list. Obviously, if you have a trusted family member or a neighbor, this would be the best choice. But for those that don't have that person, what can you do? Well, we've had great experiences with trusted house sitters. Check them out. Contact information is below in the show notes. Basically, how this works is you create an ad about your home and your pets, then house sitters who have registered apply to sit in your home for you. You can interview people on a Zoom call, and they sit in your home for free in exchange for a great place to be. Most of them work remotely, and they enjoy travel, and they pay for their own transportation to and from your home sitting location. Obviously, your experience may vary, but our experiences have been fantastic. We have a link in the show notes below, and if you do sign up for this service, we are, as an affiliate, we might get a small stipend for recommending them to you. But if you use our link, that is an easy way to support the channel. Now, how do you pack for a world cruise? Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. That topic will be covered in our next world cruise series video. And if you're looking for a world cruise, maybe we recommend you consider the Princess 2023 world cruise, 111 days. We have group space, which means discounts, perks, and a few cabins that are still available on this sailing. We would love to have you join us on that adventure. Call, text, or email us. Contact information in the show notes below. Let's see, what did we forget? What tips do you have? Please share this with your fellow travelers. This is Bob, and I can't wait to chat with you in the comments below.